The next point. Once you decide it, then you must believe it. Let me hear you say, believe it. Believe it. The book says, belief is mental acceptance. You have to mentally accept what you want. The late Emmett Fox used to use the term the mental equivalent. Let me hear you say the mental equivalent. And I'm going to say it this way. First of all, I'll quote Jesus on it. Jesus says, to him that hath, to him it shall be given. The only thing that you're going to get is what you've got. Get it? Yeah. That's right. Somebody said, got it. That's what you're supposed to say. And uh, someone says, my goodness, you left me somewhere back there at the first got, Reverend Ike. <laughs> the only thing that you are going to get is what you've got. First of all, this is another way that Reverend Ike says it. If you want something, first get it in your mind. It's in this book somewhere. Until you get it in your mind, you're not going to get it in your hand or in your bank account or in your garage <laughs> or in your pocket. You must have the mental equivalent. This book will help you to get it. I'll read just one sentence. When you believe in yourself, you become unstoppable. And there's that old saying, where there is a will, there is a way. So I'm going to save the other two points until after the break, which we're going to take in just a moment, because I want you to have your books in your hands <laughs> on page 184. Now, we have breakthrough tools here. Some of the best breakthrough tools are books and tapes so that you can hear the word. You know, we talked about the importance of the word. I have a habit, and, and I'm going to refine this into a seminar. I've promised myself that I was going to do that. I record all of my favorite verses of Scripture, all of my favorite affirmations. I've recorded them onto tapes, and I affirm each one ten times. And sometimes at a low level so that it doesn't disturb my conscious mind, I will play maybe three of those tapes all night. You see, because the conscious mind has unlimited input. You see, that's where you pick up a lot of stuff and don't know where you got it from. See, that headache that you get, you caught that five months ago on the secret storm in the edge of night. <laughs> You'd be surprised at stuff that your, your subconscious picks up from those commercials. See, they've got you all primed for that. Not only do they tell you and show you how to have a headache, they tell you what kind of headache to have. <laughs> You've got an Excedrin. Cross it out. Headache. So when you go to the store, you'll see that pass that Excedrin rack and that Pallovian response will say, oh yes, this is just what I need. And you will definitely need it. <laughs> anyway, you want to take these classes and these services with you, and you can do that on tape. I've brought several very good tapes and books here with us. One I call the Master of Money Course. Heaven knows if you are interested in coming to a greater understanding and a unique understanding about money so that you can experience it more than ever before. Whatever you need to do that's honest to get this tape, you do it. It contains the series Magnetize Your Mind for Money, the Ten Commandments of Money, and the Psychology of Money. And then there's one, the Master of Prosperity course. It tells you about prosperity, your divine right. You see, it's your divine right. You see, that's another thing. You know, when you pray, a, a lot of people pray to ask God for things. But you know, what you, everything that you ask for is really already yours. Say that to the person next to you. Everything that you ask for is really already yours. <laughs> You 
see? And it is by prayer and by praise and by believing and by decision that we take what is already ours. <coughs> Beloved, I wished above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, says the Bible. So prosperity is your divine right, and you need to understand that. You see, you're not asking God for something that's not yours. You see, you can't get what's not yours. That's the trouble with some of you. You've been trying to get what's not yours. <laughs> I have many reputations, and one is a faith healer. I remember one night in, in Miami, Florida, at the convention center, the building was crowded to the rafters, and I was praying my mass healing prayer for everybody. And, you know, some of the people dropped their crutches and jumped up and started running. Other people got out of wheelchairs and, and had all kinds of instant demonstrations. There was a little lady there with rheumatism. And so she was sitting on the front row rubbing her knees and, oh, please, Jesus, please, Jesus, please. I looked at her and said, Mama, stop praying like that. <laughs> she almost dropped her teeth. <laughs> See? You have to learn what your divine rights are. Good health is my divine right. Let's hear it. And this Master of Prosperity course tells you about that. It also tells you how to be crazy enough to get what you want. See, <laughs> I'm going to level with you just before the break. Whenever an evangelist say that, you know, he's going to be through in just a few minutes, never take him seriously, by the way. I'm going to tell you something. The reason some of you people don't have what you want is because some of you have got too much sense. If you're going to be successful, if you're not already crazy, you have to learn how to be crazy without acting crazy. <laughs> People with good sense don't get but so far. You know why? Because they know too well why they can't. <laughs> oh, I, I no, I can't do that. And then you got to watch out for these relatives and friends of yours that are always say, well, you know, you can't do that. How many of you have ever had people tell you what you could do and could do? Get the heaven away from those kind of people. <laughs> even if they are your relatives, don't even get your post office box and don't even let them know what your address is. <laughs> Send them a Christmas card every Christmas. I wish you a Merry Christmas, I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And let it stay at that, but don't talk on the telephone with him. <laughs> you get enough static from yourself. You don't need a lot of other people giving you static. <laughs> you don't need Mama's static and Daddy's static and Aunt Susie's static. And Aunt Jay, all Aunt Jay, and some of you to go to visit your relatives every year, you need to stop that. <laughs> because you don't get the gospel, you get all the bad news. And they'll tell you about all the stuff that runs in the family. <laughs> so, well, you know that, you know what. Uh, yeah. Old Aunt Janie died of the rocket pneumonia and the boogie-woogie flu. <laughs> that runs in our family. And I said, yeah, and this is where it runs the hell out. <laughs> but you got to be crazy enough not to believe all those negative things. Okay, well, I can't preach the tape to you here. You have to buy it. The tape in there also is, you can have it. I did that as a response to a message that I got from a reporter in Chicago some years ago when I began to preach success and prosperity to people. And the reporter sent word back to me through our director of public relations. Why is it that Reverend Ike tells, all, tells those people that he can have all those things? He knows they can't have all those things. I said, you tell him. I said, who in the heaven is he to tell people what they can't have? That's another thing. You know, write it down. Don't let anybody tell you what you can't have. Don't let anybody tell you what you can't be. 
And the fifth tape in here is don't be indifferent toward money. You know, some of you, you're having money problems because you're indifferent to money and you don't even realize how indifferent you are. I had an interesting experience today. Um, somebody that, that I hired to, to work for me, you know, we, had, we put an ad in the paper, but that, that, was, that ad was a doozy. It said, controversial minister. I did that to scare away the weak-hearted. <laughs> But somehow this particular person came for the interview and got hired. And one day of me, she couldn't stand it. <laughs> and so when the supervisor came to me and said, well, you know, she's not going to make it because, you know, her religion is bothering her being around here. <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, if her religion bothers her, then, you know, release her and let her go. Pay her off for the day. She worked one day. He said, well, she said that uh, the money isn't important. <laughs> See that? That's indifference to money. See, and what probably rubbed her the wrong way is, you know, my concept of, of the right relationship with money and so on. And so it seemed overemphasized to her. I don't know what all the other hang-ups were, but I tried to warn them. <laughs> but I said, my religion insists that I pay people. She worked here a day, so she's going to get paid for a day. So just prorate whatever we agreed to pay her and pay her for that day. Tell her we'll mail her the check. Goodbye, and God bless you. Till you're ready for me. <laughs> okay, and... All of these tapes, the power, your power of fascination. That's a, this is a beautiful little set, your power of fascination. There's only one tape in here, but it is so beautiful because it tells you how to use your power of fascination. You can use your power of fascination. We, when we talk about all these different powers, they're really the same. They're aspects of the same one power. But when you horn in on your power of fascination, you can use it to bring you what you want. I talked about this, the excitement of money, overflowing abundance, get your kicks. <laughs> Money-making, miracle-working idea, technique that does the trick. And there's a money hook, money feeling meditation included in here. Uh-huh. Well, it's in there, believe it or not. How to get out of the hell of poverty, sickness, and suffering. Prosperity plus. You don't have to go through hell to get to heaven. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I can look at you and tell some of you, you've been going through hell trying to get to heaven. <laughs> oh, Lord, is hell trying to get to heaven. <laughs> I remember in, in, in the black church back in South Carolina, and by the way, you know, I do know a lot about black people because I used to be black before I turned green. <laughs> But you know what I found out? I found out that um, I couldn't buy anything with black power. <laughs> the only color of power in the American economy is green power. And if you get enough of that, people don't care what color your face or anything else is. <laughs> A beautiful set. Control your life series. Tell your mind what to think. Tell your feelings how to feel. Tell your body how to react. Woo, that'll fix you up. <laughs> <laughs>